Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I woke up this morning at 5 a.m., mostly because Sumo was interrupted yesterday with one of the political cabinet announcements that was being made by the new prime minister. And I fell asleep shortly after 6 p.m. So I woke up, saw this tweet from Sam, and he had asked me to make some comment on a retweet from SBI's CEO, Mr. Kitao. So yeah, I'm going to do that. So Sam, this video is for you. Now, I know that some of you are wanting to know why we watch the actions so much from Mr. Kitao. And I will give you a short list. You might be new to this space or you might not really have an idea about XRP, but he is the largest shareholder, outside shareholder of the company Ripple with more than 10% share. He pushes the adoption of XRP with the first trial that he did in that test environment with the Siam Commercial Bank in Thailand, who now is a regular user of RippleNet technology. And he is also going to launch this XRP weighted fund that holds the actual digital asset in the fund starting most likely this month. And he uses XRP as a shareholder benefit. He also built the R3 core to settler and that used XRP as the first digital asset for the proof of concept. And we know that he, license, uh, he licenses that technology. He built MoneyTap, that is the mobile app that is used by the regional banks that runs on Ripple. Uh, the exchange, two of them, one that is with the SBI VC trade name and also one called FX Coin that he backed in Japan with an undisclosed amount publicly. They just announced that they are moving forward using XRP as a bridge currency known as on-demand liquidity. We don't have the details of that, but I personally think we're going to hear something about it very soon. Now, I said that this is a short list, so I'm going to stop here. I'm not even going to talk about the security tokens and securitize, which, by the way, because I did my research on the company securitize, which was invested by SBI, by Ripple, by Coinbase, I found Tezos. So it always pays to do your own research. Now, Mr. Kitao, I can safely say, is in the news every day in Japan. Yet with more than 200 companies and his lectures, his books, his TV show, this is uh, a show that occurred last Sunday evening. He's with uh, Dr. Yu Honjo. He's a doctor of medicine at Kyoto University. He graduated in 1975. He's a top medical scientist in Japan, and they're discussing his recent cancer work. The Kyoto University also is one of the universities that Ripple works with. It is one of the, and I hate to say which one is the Harvard and which one is the Yale, but it's one of those two. The other one is Tokyo University or Todai in Tokyo, but Kyoto University is fabulous. So big news as of late, let me just tell you what's been going on because I haven't done a video specifically on SBI for a while. There is someone from Bloomberg who did a phone interview with Mr. Soichi Okayasu. And this SBI spokesperson was quoted as saying that SBI is going to probably move out of Hong Kong due to the recently implemented national security law. It has weakened the attractiveness of staying in that country. And operating with just about 100 employees, it's kind of big news. So it was covered a lot in the Hong Kong dailies. And so with this consideration of leaving, which is very Japanese the way they do it, they say we're considering leaving, but they always, they give a little bit of piece of information before some kind of negative news comes out. So this is most likely going to happen as soon as March. And I would say that officially it's still on the table, but I just know the way that Japanese announcements are made. You get a little bit of 
information before the big announcement is made. That's just the way they do it here. I think it softens the blow. And I think it's a good idea to do it that way. Although um, the United States doesn't doesn't seem to do it that way at all. They They keep everything hidden and then just make one big announcement usually. So this is the, you know, I can think that's just what Brian Brooks did, right? When he said that banks can custody digital assets. Uh, you know, there was no leak about that prior at all. But this country just handles that kind of news differently. And so um, Mr. Kitao is trying to move the financial center, or I shouldn't say move, but to reinvent the location of the financial center in Japan. He wants to do it in Osaka. Osaka actually has a history of being the financial center uh, before Tokyo was. And I think it's a good strategy, actually. I mean, um, he's got a good working relationship with the governor down there. It also uh, is, I think, a safe thing to do because of natural disasters. I mean, if there is a tsunami or an earthquake and it affects one of the other um, cities, if you have everything concentrated in Tokyo, that's just like putting your eggs in one basket. So diversifying the financial centers uh, is just smart to me. Now I covered that news I talked about with Osaka in a previous video, so I won't go into much detail on that. And I've been updating you on the vision and the action and the formation of what is being called this fourth mega bank in Japan. And this is being led by Mr. Kitao. And he's doing it through a series of capital tie-ups done to strengthen the smaller banks, which with years of zero interest rates have basically destroyed these smaller banks. And I think everyone should pay attention to the words that I just said, because if your country is moving towards that direction of near zero interest rates, <coughs> US, please listen, uh, part of that uh, equation just doesn't work. It's not sustainable. And so the solution that Mr. Kitao has is to bring these smaller banks into the digital world by sharing that technology, much of which is the RippleNet technology and also R3, to make them more competitive with the larger banks. And in doing so, in bringing those 10 regional banks so far together, uh, he is creating a fourth mega bank. So you have to understand that the article that Sam shared with me, um, I want to give you a little bit of the backside story. No, this isn't fluff. It's just frustrating, I think, for a lot of content creators like myself that just the attention is given to only the headlines or just reading articles from so-so sources out there. And also, it's frustrating for us too when the attention span is really down to just sound bites and those headlines. I, I I get frustrated with that. So in this video, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, Sam, hang in there. You can put it on two times speed or three times speed, but just hang in there because I, I think this is an important, um, I think this is important enough to go into a little bit of detail. So the photo that you see here is Sugasan. He's on the right and he is replacing the prime minister who just left his post because of health reasons, um, Abe-san. And at this time, when he was giving the bouquet of flowers to Abe-san, this is because he was elected in his group of the Liberal Democratic Party to succeed Abe-san. Now, no, the words liberal and democrat do not mean left, quite opposite in Japan. And yes, flowers are traditional for hitting milestones, whether it be for men or for women. That is something that I think is interesting. All right, so it came down to three candidates and it was really uh, yesterday afternoon that we saw the vote. And I'm just gonna show you, this is a, um, 
this is a shot from the uh, diet, which is what their their um, cabinet members where they where they it's like our Congress or our Senate. It's where they uh, conduct the government, and everyone is voting, and they're putting a little piece of paper. Can you believe that into a uh, voting box. And then if I can show you, it's just, I think it's fascinating to see the process. And then they actually count those cards, uh, by hand. I don't know if I can find in this video where they're doing that. Maybe I can't find that, but that's probably not that important. So then they count them by hand and then they are, um, the results are put on official document and handed into the um, kind of the uh, speaker of the house who hands it over to be announced. And this is the actual announcement from yesterday when Sugasan, the numbers were uh, given and he won. So you can see here. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you why that's funny later. Actually, I missed that before when I saw this video. Okay, so there he officially is now named as the new prime minister. Yeah, so this morning, um, this was kind of the news uh, after the count was announced and he uh, announced a lot of his cabinet members. The, uh, the cabinet members are interesting. 20 were announced and two of them are women. Uh, one is a Harvard graduate, Yoko Kamikawa. She's going to be the new minister of justice. But here Sugusan is this morning. He's visiting the grave of Kaji Yamasan, who was the 60th and 61st chief cabinet secretary in January 1996 to September 1997. And that was the post that Sugasan had. He was the chief cabinet secretary. So he is um, just, it was his mentor. And so he is paying respect to his mentor as he gets this new position. So now back to the article. Yeah, I, I, I told you this is, this is the long version. I want to tell you the meaning behind that article because on September 2nd, Mr. Suga was asked a very difficult question when he was trying to win the support for his party, which is the LDP, the Liberal De Democratic Party. And they go through a lot, very short period of time, like only not even a week, but they go through a lot of questions, of course. And he was asked about the plight of local banks and the local banks with the low interest rates and because it, it, it's just killing them. And he responded that there were too many local banks and reorganization was an option. Then the next day, he called Mr. Kitao, the CEO of SBI, to thank him for his work that he's been doing with the regional banks. And then on the night of the 4th, he appeared on the TV Tokyo's WBS uh, program, which is a news channel. And he mentioned the establishment of a digital agency. And that's a tentative name, he said, uh, called the yeah, digital agency, in cooperation with a person from the Ministry of Trade. So it was kind of, you know, one of those, again, a little leak of information, but no real details. So the article that Mr. Kitao tweeted out that Sam asked if I, you know, would give some um, comment on the dynamic happening here. This is an article from the Nikan Gendai. And it's that daily present day media that focuses mostly on politics. 
And at this end right here, do you see the question mark? This is Kakuryu, kak, Kakuryu, Kakuryo, sorry, Kakuryo ni dare ga suku, which means who will get the minister post? This is a question. This isn't an, an announcement. This is a, this is an article that was done that's speculating that Mr. Kitao or Mr. Takenada is going to some way, somehow assist Sugasan. And it, it's a question still, all right? There's no announcement. And I really looked up until the last moment before I hit the video on this. So of course we could have had an announcement in the last hour and I don't know about it, but this person right here on the right is Mr. Hazel Takenaka. And um, he is, in fact, um, also an SBI Holdings advisor. And he's very interesting. And I think it's good speculation on the part of the writer because uh, this 69 year old Mr. Takenaka, who's a businessman, he's also a political activist, he's an economist, he's a professor right now at the Toyo University. And oh, Along with being an outside director of SBI Holdings, he's he's got a, a list of people that he advises. I'm just citing a sliver of his career. If you saw the amount that this man has done in his career, it's almost second to none. And he was used heavily during the Prime Minister Koizumi's reform, and that was really a controversial time. He was a minister of the economic policy in 2001 and elected to the House of Councillors in 2004 to 2006. And it was controversial because he is on the policy side or thinking that puts the interest of the business first. And there are, of course, some other political camps that want to have an emphasis on the employees or the workers first. Think of it in the U.S. as that push and pull between big business and unions. You can think of it that way. And it's the same kind of push and pull that exists, I think, in every um, democracy. All right. So all that I've covered so far is very positive. But there is a little bit of troublesome news that came through in the last 24 hours. And the SBI securities, let's just know right here that on Monday, this is, this is still positive. I'm still positive. On Monday, they opened a checking account with the Bank of Japan and started trading funds on October 19th. They are the first internet company con to conduct such transactions with the BOJ. It's a big deal. And the deposits can be used to exchange funds with other financial institutions and settle government bond transactions. So this was a really, really huge announcement for SBI. Late yesterday, here comes the bad. So I'm, this this card is the good, the bad, the ugly. So uh, this is actually the ugly. Late yesterday afternoon, six accounts at SBI Securities were disclosed as being hacked from July to September, and they are missing nearly one million U.S. dollars. Now SBI is going to cover those losses, but the unauthor unauthorized login is what it is, and it was done by a third party, and it leaked a lot of personal information. So there is a very important lesson here, and that is accounts that do not have two-factor authen uh, authentic authentication, that doesn't right, sound right, authentic authentication. Hmm, okay. <laughs> if, if you don't have that two-factor authentication activated, your account is at risk because this did not have that two-factor authentication enacted. So please learn from this. And if you have been lazy in doing that with anything you're doing online, uh, stop it immediately and start using it. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but the chances of you uh, being affected just are are vastly reduced. So I need to tell you that this comes on the heels of 
news that came out on August 27th were Mizuho Securities. They were making erroneous orders in their trading by mistake. And then Nomura Securities on September 11th had 275 corporate clients who trade ETFs. Their personal information was leaked. And then the Alibaba Group, which is also part of the Ant Financial, the investors of the SoftBank's Vision Fund, that is also backed by India's largest digital payment company, Paytm, the smartphone app, PayPay, along with two others. And this is just news that's about 24 hours old. They have also unauthorized withdrawals. And the problem is this news, this ongoing news, creates a lot of mistrust in tech in Japan. This is not the kind of news you want. So that's why I am calling it the ugly. So Sam, I know that that was a long version, but um, it's just not fair to just go through the headlines. And also I know there's a lot a lost in translation and people didn't understand that that video or that article was written as speculation. And the question is, who's going to get that minister's position? So do I think Mr. Kitao will get it? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, he's considered a leader in FinTech for sure. Absolutely. Hands down. And he's also has a friendship with Sugasan. So it's very possible. I, I think even if he doesn't get that minister position, he's going to be an advisor uh, officially, I'm sure. And the bad is these ultra low interest rates. They don't work. And the ugly, the hacks and the information leaks. Those are the worst. So I will show you just one more article that takes the front runners of Suga's advisors and supporters. And you can see there is Mr. Hezo Takenaka, who I talked about, the professor. And then some other people. There's Mr. Kitao of SBI. And if we come down here, here is David Atkinson. And yes, now we are officially going into the fluff with David Atkinson, because I think he's also going to be one of those advisors. And who is David Atkinson? He is an interesting man. He's now the CEO of Konishi Decorative Arts and Crafts. It's a 300 year old Tokyo based restoration company, which restores shrines and temples across Japan. He started studying Japanese when he went to Oxford in 1983. I, I think I've also read that he and Mr. Kitao also have a um, have a business personal friendship too, as well relationship. And um, because uh, I think more than they just because they went to Oxford, but this David Atkinson is really truly uh, quite remarkable. And then in the 1990s is when he moved to Japan and he went into investment banking. And I will put a link to his company's website because it's absolutely fascinating that he's been entrusted with this business. I, I want you to look through, if you have the interest, to look at the details of the restoration of Japan's most pre precious cultural sites in this website. I am, I'm, I, 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 it's, it's, it's beyond words for me. This company is doing amazing work and especially with the lacquer, Urushi it's called. And that is uh, a real, real, real special craft. Look at some of this, amazing. I mean, just to get, just to get the right colors of the original paint, that has been used over the centuries. Look at this work. This 
Okay, here we have a before and after. I haven't gone through the whole site yet. So this is the before. Huh. This is the after. Oh, I can't wait to look at all these. But there's one in particular. Wow, look at this great moon. It's a great gate. Wow. Yeah, as you can tell, I really love this. So there's one I think that you'll really enjoy if you do come to Tokyo. And it is just a straight shot from Shinagawa Station in the center of Tokyo to a place called Atami. And you're going to find the Izusan Jinja. And this is a, this is a shrine that that company worked on. And I think you'll very much love it, not only because the shrine is really beautiful, but because this is an amazing seaside town. This shrine dates all the way back to 549 AD. They know for sure that it is, it is, it is at least that old at this site. And they do have a main festival that occurs in mid-April, if you want to time that for that reason. And I want to show you just the detail of some of that lacquered wood craftsmanship. Wow. Wow, wow. All right, everybody. Yeah, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.